1975's O Caroline. O Caroline? 1975's O Caroline can just be played with four chords throughout the whole song, so we're going to have a look at that beginner friendly version first, and then if you want to take things to the next level with some slightly more complex chords and some little lead parts, then we're going to cover that as well. Let's get straight into it. So these four chords could get you through the whole song. That G major. Then we go to a B minor 7. Our first finger doesn't need to leave the fretboard for that. It can be our anchor. It can stay behind that second fret of the A. Nice strong first finger to pull out that G second fret. If that's a little bit tricky, you can put your little finger down as well to the full fret of the G and just make that standard B minor if that first finger is struggling to get that full pressure. After that B minor, we go over to an A major. And then once we're in that A major, there's a quick D that's thrown in sometimes. Our first finger can stay where it is. Third finger slides along, we're into D major. So always look for opportunities where a finger doesn't have to leave the fretboard. It's called an anchor when that happens, and it really helps you link chord progressions. And in those verses, it's pretty laid back. You could just do single strums. G major, to so that B minor seven, or B minor, over to your A major, and then the D. Back to that G major. If you want to spice things up a little bit, there's a lovely open chord that's used instead of the G major in those verses. It's G sus2. Instead of our first finger being on the second fret of the A, we bring it down to the second fret of the G, and we can use our first finger to mute that open A string if we want, just to remove a couple of the bass notes, and really focus on that top and middle. When that rings out on the track, it sounds beautiful, so give that a go. And then from there, you just link to your B minor, your A major, and your D major. Now to get a bit of a better understanding of when those chords change, because that D major sneaks in right at the end of the progression, let's put a strumming pattern in that can be played over the chorus. See how that D just sneaks in at the end before it links back to that G major? Let's play that strumming pattern a little bit slower. Quick B minor. A quick D major. And you notice when we leave that B minor, we start the A major on the up strums. And it's the same when that D major sneaks in and goes back up to the G major. Really helps give that whole track a skip. Now there is not as much of a prominent guitar skipping along in that way. Obviously it's quite minimal, the guitars in this track. There's lots of single strums, there's some really nice synth work in there, bass work, little lead licks. If we want to play along to that original recording, this is a nice skippy strumming pattern that's going to allow us to do that. I've removed that G sus2 from the chorus. You could put that in there if you want to. I'll leave you to decide which one you feel more comfortable with. Coming out of those verses into the chorus, it feels like that D major could be cut off, so you could just do your G major to B minor, A major, let that A major ring out, and then that chorus kicks in and you can bring in your strumming pattern. We've got those single strums to get us through the verses, we've got our strumming pattern to get us through the choruses. Let's make those verses a little bit more interesting. Let's play our G major as a free finger version in an F shape. So we're gonna to go to the fifth fret of the D, and then we're gonna to go to the full fret of the G, and then the third fret of the B and we're just gonna play those three strings. Use our thumb to cut out our low E and A, and we can curve our first finger to mute that high E. We just want those three notes to come through that form the G major chord. And that is replacing our open G major, or our G sus2, we're here instead. After that single strum, we're gonna to link to the A major with that lovely little slide. So G major, and then our second finger is gonna slide from the fourth to the sixth. And then our third and fourth finger are gonna come down onto the G and B seventh fret. And then we're moving that same shape into our A major. Rather than being on the G major, fifth fret, we go to the seventh fret, and we're now forming our A major. So let's do that nice and slow. Beautiful. And then to link back to the G major. A little bit trickier, but sounds lovely. So 
after that A major's rung out, we go back to the full fret with our second finger, slide up to the sixth. This time we cover, we bar the fifth fret of the B and the E, and we hammer our third finger down to the seventh fret of the B. Once that's ringing out nicely, we go back to our full fret with our first finger, and then our second finger goes on to the fifth fret of the B, and we do a hammer on there. Our third finger hammers down to the sixth fret of the G. And then we're back at our G major. Really like the way that links together, and it sort of mimics the piano part that's in there. Now we've upped our game with the verses, let's do the same with the choruses. So instead of that strumming pattern, the other guitarist is playing more like the verse where he rings out a couple of chords, but then he's got those little linking licks and strumming patterns that combine everything and add a real nice groove to the track. Let's give that a go. I love how that brings everything together. In the live version, the live video that 1975 did of O'Caroline, you get a really good idea and picture of what the other guitarist is playing, so I'll link that below if you need another reference point. So let's break that down a bit. Ring our G sus 2 out, I love how that sounds in this song. And then we go to a familiar part from the verse, we go to our seventh fret of the G and the B, play them both together. But then we go back to our A major shape and we've got a little skippy strumming pattern in there. So all together. I like to start that on the up strum as well. That A major shape. Or the F shape, playing the A major chord, sorry. So if you want to get those percussive elements, we're just relaxing all the fingers that are fretting the strings. And as we relax those fingers, our strumming pattern is still taking place, so we get that percussive element. After this, we slide our third finger along to the ninth fret of the D. First finger goes to the seventh fret of the G. Second finger tucks into the eighth fret of the B. Two strums here, similar thing. We're using our thumb to mute the low strings, curving the first finger to mute the high E. And then we throw in a quick A major shape again before we go back to our G sus two. That last little change there with that quick little shape in the A and then the G sus two does happen fast. Start this nice and slow and build towards that, but once you get it, it sounds beautiful, it feels great to play. So all together. With that A major shape, if it's hard to form all the elements of it, I'd say just throw in the first and second finger on the fifth fret of the B, and the sixth fret of the G. So we can go. I've seen quite a few variations of how this is played, even in 1975's own videos. If any of you have been in bands and you've been playing a song for a long period of time, just changing where that's played on the neck or what instrument you trigger or play a certain sound on really helps keep things fresh. So don't be freaked out if you do see something slightly different being played. As long as you've got those notes coming through, we're in tune and we've got that rhythm locked in, you're gonna be able to play along to this song perfectly fine and hopefully enjoy it. And that's something I encourage a lot in the guitar courses that I create. We wanna learn songs, it's a brilliant way to develop, but we're always looking for opportunities to add our own creative, unique expression to the parts that we're playing. So start to see how you can discover and experiment with yours. There's the bridge that occurs in the song, just give me one more chance tonight. That is just A and G, so when you get to that part, you can play that full-bodied open G major, or if you want to mix things up, bring in the G major bar chord, and then slide up to the A major. It does that once, and then when it goes back to the G, it hangs on that G until they go back into the standard G major, B minor, A. D progression. One more part we're going to look at. If you want to lock into the groove even more, there's this lovely little percussive damping part that goes on in the pre-chorus and the choruses in particular. So let's have a look at that. We can go to the 12th fret of the D and the 14th fret of the A. I've also seen this played on the 7th fret of the G 
and the ninth fret of the D. Same notes, different position on the neck. If you listen closely to the choruses, you'll really hear this coming through. Some slight variation of how that's played, but I would recommend just really, again, trying to lock into that groove, feel the bounce that occurs, and then just go back and forth between that D and A string, focusing more on the D. And listen out for a little bend that happens on the D string, and a hammer on from the 12th to the 14th fret of the A. Just have a bit of fun with that and see what you can do along to the track. Okay, I hope you got something good from that. Please feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. If you want more 1975, there are two massive tunes popping up now, or there's plenty of other stuff you can go and check out on the channel. Big thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Take care.